Welcome to the Lake Michigan Center, the home of the Robert B. Annis Water Resources Institute, or AWRI as we call it. The Lake Michigan Center is located on Muskegon Lake, which connects to Lake Michigan. AWRI is a part of Grand Valley State University with a mission of integrating research, education, and outreach to enhance and preserve freshwater resources. The Lake Michigan Center is a place where scientists and students study the Great Lakes and their watersheds with a special emphasis on Michigan. Their research helps us to understand our freshwater environment. We also have a classroom where the students can enjoy specially designed programs about water. And write down a few visual observations. Why is freshwater important? Well, our lives depend on a clean source of fresh water. Did you know that much of our body weight is water and almost 20% of the fresh surface water in the world is found in the Great Lakes? We are lucky to live near Lake Michigan and we need to do our best to understand and protect the lake and its watersheds. A great way to learn about aquatic science and the water resources of Michigan is to spend time on one of AWRI's research and education vessels, the DJ Angus or the WG Jackson. The DJ Angus is 45 feet long and it is located on the Grand River, docked at Harbor Island in Grand Haven. It does its studies primarily in Spring Lake and Lake Michigan. The W.G. Jackson is 65 feet long and it is docked on Muskegon Lake at the Lake Michigan Center in Muskegon. During the summer, the vessel sometimes travels around Lake Michigan to other ports. You will get a chance to be an aquatic scientist on your trip on the W.G. Jackson or the D.J. Angus. Both vessels take groups out to do water quality monitoring, to learn about invasive species, and to study human impacts on our watersheds. There will be activities taking place on the back or aft deck, the side deck, and in the science laboratory. Let's talk about what you can expect on your trip. What are you going to wear? To make sure you have the proper attire, you will want to check the weather forecast. In the spring, the water is still very cold, especially in Lake Michigan, and you may want to dress extra warmly in layers. You can always take off a layer or two if you get too warm. If rain is predicted, try to bring a raincoat or poncho. You will need to wear shoes that protect your toes, not sandals or flip-flops, even in the summertime. And there are a few rules to know about. No backpacks or weapons of any kind are allowed on board, not even a multi-tool, and there is no gum chewing on board either. After you arrive, the crew will go over safety procedures with you. Remember, these are working research vessels and safety is our number one priority. An instructor will demonstrate how to put on the life jackets and show you where they are located. Both boats have life jackets that are readily available. Anyone who would like to wear one is welcome to put one on. If your school requires that you need to wear a life jacket, or if the captain directs you to put one on, please do so immediately. There are yellow lines painted on the deck for your safety. Do not cross the yellow lines unless you are given permission by one of the crew. These lines remind you to stay out of dangerous areas, such as near the sampling davit or A-frame. Some of you may be heroes, which means you will be assisting the deckhand with samples taken on the hero platform. Heroes must wear a life jacket. You will only be allowed on the hero platform when you are invited. Follow the instructions of the captain and crew at all times, especially in case of an emergency. They have been trained to keep you safe, but you need to cooperate. It is very important that you do not push others, horseplay, or run. You must keep both of your feet on the deck during the trip. There is a restroom, or as we say on the boat, a head. Knock first before entering. While you are in the science laboratory, be careful with the equipment. Wear goggles when working with chemicals and always follow directions. Be sure to ask questions if you don't understand something. Let's get underway to our first station. During that time, the instructors will be explaining your role in helping to collect data. Meanwhile, the captain who operates the boat from the pilot house, which is off limits to passengers, will be navigating the boat to the first sampling location using a Global Positioning System, or GPS. The captain will announce that the boat has arrived on station. Our latitude is up here. Longitude is right here. At this time, a student right. will record the water depth, latitude, and longitude, along with various other weather and physical conditions. While collecting data, we often work in teams. When we are at our first station, 
we usually have an outside group who will do tests on the aft deck and an inside group who will do tests inside the cabin where the science laboratory is located. When we get to the second station, these two groups will trade places so each group will be able to experience an outdoor test and an indoor test. Here we are on station. We will gather water, plankton, and bottom sediment on the aft deck. Van Dorn water bottles are used to collect the water to be used in the laboratory. These bottles are located just outside the science laboratory. A hero in a life jacket is needed to assist the deckhand with this task. The deckhand sets the bottles open to trap the water samples and then attaches them to the davit line, sending them to the appropriate depths. When the bottles are pulled up and returned to their holder, water temperature is measured by looking at the thermometers inside the bottles. The water samples are now ready for use in the science laboratory. Sometimes a temperature gauge will be fastened to the line as it is lowered into the water. It records the temperature every five feet. When this comes back up, the gauge will be read and the temperatures plotted on a chart. Meanwhile, others are measuring water transparency with a Secchi disk. This is attached to a line that is marked with both meters and half meters. When the black and white Secchi disk is lowered to a depth at which it is no longer visible, the disk is raised and the Secchi depth is determined by counting the marks on the line. We will do the test three times. Like most tests, you will be doing this three times so you will have a more accurate reading. Color can also tell us a lot about what's in the water. Many factors influence the color of water, including sunlight, suspended materials, algae, and mineral content. The 4L Yule color scale is used to assign a number from 1, or blue, to 22, or brown, for the water color. Back at the davit, the deckhand is finishing the sampling. Using a plankton net that is lifted through the water, we are able to collect small living things in the water, both zooplankton and phytoplankton, or algae. Plankton density can be measured by pouring the plankton into a graduated cylinder with a miniature Secchi disk on the bottom. This sample will be saved for viewing under the microscopes in the laboratory. The last thing to be done before leaving the station is a sample of the bottom sediment that is brought up with the Ponar Grab Sampler. This sampler is very heavy and will only be used by the deckhands. For your safety, please stand clear of this equipment. Once the sediment is on board and its characteristics are recorded, the deckhand will spray it with water, leaving any benthic organisms that may have been residing in the sediment. These will be collected, counted, and recorded. Sometimes we find creatures like quagga mussels that are invasive species or bloodworms that are good fish food. While the group on the aft deck is busy with their tasks, the laboratory group is analyzing the water samples we have collected. Through various tests, we can determine the water quality and how it affects the plants and animals living in the water. Tests are usually done three times and the average is then calculated. To measure the dissolved oxygen in the water, we add chemicals to a sample until a color change is achieved. Oxygen is as essential to life in the water as it is to life on land. It is added to water by photosynthesis and through contact with air. During the summer, oxygen levels in the water can reach zero in parts of some lakes. We can measure the cloudiness or turbidity of water by using a turbidity meter. It is a measure of the material suspended in water, which can be anything from organic material, such as plankton, to inorganic materials, like silt and clay. The turbidity meter shines a light through the sample, giving us a measurable reading by using a photocell. We also use a conductivity meter to help determine water quality. Generally, the higher the electrical conductivity of a sample, the greater the concentration of charged particles, which are known as ions. For example, salt water has high conductivity because it has a lot of sodium and chloride ions. Have you ever heard of the term pH? Measurement of pH is a way to tell if the water is acidic, basic, or neutral. We measure pH with a pH meter. But when we get way up here, strong acid. But check this out. The pH scale is a series of numbers ranging from 0 to 14, with 7 being neutral.
Certain plants and animals may be harmed by pH levels that are considerably above or below 7. Using titration chemicals, we can determine the alkalinity of water. Alkalinity is a measure of the capacity of water to neutralize acid. This is also known as the buffering capacity of water. The higher the alkalinity, the greater the ability of water to neutralize acid rain, which tends to lower pH. There sure is a great deal involved in understanding water quality. We've done a lot of sample collecting and testing. You may be asking yourself, now that we've done all this work, where does all the information go? That's easy. It goes here on the data board and is then put in a computer database. By looking at the information that we gathered, we will be able to compare sample sites and determine the water quality. Each lake is different. Eutrophic lakes have lots of nutrients, high productivity, and low dissolved oxygen at times. Oligotrophic lakes have low nutrients, low productivity, and high dissolved oxygen. Lakes that fall between the eutrophic and oligotrophic ranges are called mesotrophic. Being an aquatic scientist means a lot more than just taking a glass of water and holding it up to see if it is clear. A scientist shares results and knowledge with others. You can tell your friends and family about your experience, helping them to understand why it is important to take care of our lakes and streams. From the Robert B. Annis Water Resources Institute at Grand Valley State University. Check us out on the web and have a great cruise.